Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Oxerg versus DeWalt, but it is going to be on Sanctuary, which, another large map, uh, another four player map. Getting a look at it, you've got this main, which is actually fairly sizable. It does have a ramp this time, leading into a little bit more of a sizable natural expansion. Kind of nice, cool eight slash infinity, whatever sign there. Mineral only again, very reminiscent of the last map, although as was commented by Hawk, there's more chokes on this map to work with, which makes it a little bit easier for lurkers to do their thing. Also makes high storm bait a thing. Uh, six o'clock and twelve o'clock. Have this is kind of an interesting formation, kind of an odd formation on the mineral patch. But we'll go ahead and see how this plays out. Go ahead and get it started. Pull down the diplomacy menu. Oxerd upper right hand corner as the red zerg. He is both of these guys and Dewalt. Protoss, bottom left hand corner is yellow Protoss. Both of these guys, BSL finalists. Here and there. Or top, I would, I would say definitely the top 10 foreigners. For those not familiar with Brood War, did get a good rate here. Um, anybody out, so Koreans. Koreans are by far the best StarCraft players. Hands down. They're the ones who made it in eSport. It's actually, for a time, it was number one on their t televised. So it's like soccer number one, or sorry, actually number two. It's like soccer number one, sport. Number two is Brood War. And they considered it a sport. Everybody who does who plays StarCraft semi-professionally or professionally or makes money playing StarCraft outside of Korea is considered a foreigner because that's kind of the home base of it. Just, just to explain the terminology. Oxerg, DeWalt play in BSL. If you're unfamiliar with that, check it out. That's the Bombastic Star League. And that is basically the premier tournament for everybody that's non-Korean. And these guys are basically, so if you're if you're not counting any of the Koreans, these are two of, I would argue, the top 10, top 15 players in the world, if not top five at the moment. I would actually, personally, I would say top, yeah, I would actually put these guys at top five. So Bonneth, I would say arguably number one right now. DeWalt, maybe number two. Oxerg can take games off both of those guys. And I would say he's somewhere in the five range. As far as three and four, I would need more arguing or more more thinking about it. Really like Oxerg's play recently. He is opening up. Looked like Overpool. Actually talk about the build orders here for a second. Forge going on the natural expansion. So it looks like setting up for potentially Nexus first. Probe sneaking into upper right hand corner. Seeing the Zerg base. And it looks like doing a good amount of harassment. And might be able to slow down this natural expansion. And I'm almost wondering if he's going to spend a pylon to do it. Doesn't look like he's doing so. You can see Oxer really respecting this probe. Trying to plant that hatchery. Waiting for it to swing around. This is really going to delay that cadre of Zerglings being produced. And might even want to wait. For oh, it does manage to sneak it down. Might have even wanted to wait until the Zerglings were out to even try it. Full complement of six Zerglings. Moving across the field. Probe. Is he going to get caught? Does get caught. Overlord is going to take a while to get to that natural expansion, so I'm not sure. I don't think there was a, a drone scout currently for Oxerg. He's just going to let his Zerglings do the scouting for him. So he's going to take a while wandering. And I think with that, DeWalt's going to go, go ahead and plop down that Nexus. So feeling confident enough, basically in the lack of scouting, to get that done. But he does have a wide open natural expansion, so he's a little bit lucky that Oxerg didn't just decide to go cross map there. Planting down that gateway. And yeah, respecting it and actually not knowing what the, where these Zerglings are, he is going to lose a bit of mining time because wisely he's pulling his probes off to plug the gaps. Because this amount of Zerglings can get through and do a significant amount of damage. Mining a little bit of minerals before heading home. Zerglings finding location. And probes providing a little bit of defense. Oxerg losing two Zerglings on the front. Going ahead and plopping his third hatchery at the mineral only. And getting his extractor down. Seems to be... It almost feels like there was, in the meta, you had the 973, which was more the Hydra contain slash bust option. Overlord's repositioning to go ahead and get information. And DeWalt actually critically able to sneak in and get another scout into Oxerg's base, which is actually huge. See how long it stays there, but without Zergling speed, which I do not believe was upgraded... He might actually even have a second, and he's actually exploring. I think this might be a lack of... So he's checking out the 9 o'clock, 
seeing if the third hatch was there. Instead, I think he's going to wander around, find it at the mineral only. Two Zerglings moving their way back across. Again, they don't have speed, which means this probe, as long as they're not protecting the ramp, ooh, well, allowing it a little bit of time, that, that could be huge if he can get back in. Lair is upgrading, which lets DeWalt know if he gets eyes on this. But he's more likely going to be facing Mutalisks or Hydalisks in the mid-game. More drones being produced. Yeah, that is that is enormous. Let's him decide his tech. Cybernetic score going up. Definitely knows he needs to open Corsair. And that probe's still alive. Would be even better as if he can keep it alive just to make absolutely sure that he's going up against Lair. A couple Zealots making their way across the map now. Trying to clean out those Zerglings while Oxerg was potentially distracted. I think they're going to go ahead and wander up and try to attack that mineral only, get a couple free drone kills. Because there's just not enough, and try to force Oxerg to produce additional Zerglings. Oxerg now upgrading Zergling speed, perhaps realizing the situation. Overlord wandering in is going to see that Stargate upgrading, and I think actually with this timing, he might be able to turn that Overlord around and keep it alive. And yeah, actually I think he might be going Zergling speed just because he doesn't want to have to deal with this probe scout constantly checking out and seeing everything in his base. I don't think that probe scout got a good look at the Spire, but I believe DeWalt has already smelled this out. Spires plop down. Zealots moving in. She might be able to get two kills here. Zerglings are there to engage. Unfortunately, it looks like a little... Oh, sneaking into the corner to go ahead and engage piecemeal. Unfortunately, this isn't a fully protected corner. So, this, yeah, I think he was hoping if I get in this gap, they'll have to fight me one on one. Zealots do very well in that situation. Instead, the second Zealot trying to flee to this upper corner. where We might be able to get that same sort of situation. It looks like the Zerglings backing off instead. First Corsair is being produced. We do see weapons one being upgraded, which suggests we're going to see a significant Corsair fleet try to do economic da damage that way. The Zealot, another Zealot sneaking in, looks like it was able to get a drone kill. Another Zealot moving in to do some damage there. Drones, a little bit misrallied, so DeWalt doing a good job of continuing the economic onslaught and really forcing additional Zerg, a lot of larva. Really, I feel like when you're playing against Zerg, you attack the larva, not the, not the, not anything else. You're not attacking the larva, you're attacking the army. And just in case he didn't know the Spire timing, wanders in with this Zealot, might even get an additional drone kill. Just barely misses it. And, wow. Has all of the information you could ever want, plus saw the Spire right as it was spawning, so he's got all the information in the world. Five hatcheries being plopped down instead, Evolution Champion being dropped. And actually, Oxer opting to produce Scourge rather than Mutalisks. Because he's like, I'm just not going to get anything done with this harass. Two Corsair already produced, and that's actually going to hurt him. Because he... Critically, he might end up losing the air game. And when you lose the air game as Zerg, it is very difficult to contend. Level 1 weapons is going to be up momentarily. I assume these Corsairs are going to start flooding the map and just peeling away... Overlords. Six hatchery being produced. Hydralisk then being plopped down. I think Oxerg knows the situation. That the Hydralisk, that he's going to need Hydralisks more or less to defend this. Trying to get a creep colony down. I assume a spore right there. He's, he's got a lot of Overlords that are exposed. I'm wondering if we're going to see a DT follow up. We do see gateways, a Citadel of Adun. Dark Temple Archives, or temp <laughs> Temple Archives being upgraded. Zealots moving their way across. Going to catch a few Zerglings, so Oxerg knows this is incoming. The Zerglings still trying to be a little bit annoying and get done what they can. But this base is very exposed, only has that Overlord. And this is only two Scourge, and another set of Scourge being, well, sorry, four Scourge to deal with a lot of Corsairs. And once you have a Corsair count, I believe a five if you have good enough micro, but six is where you're really safe with that level one weapons. The Scourge are no longer effective. Nice surround by Oxerd. But these Zealots are being microed very well by DeWalt. Plus they have weapons one. So not even losing a single Zealot. Several of them not even taking any base damage. So it's going to force even more Zerglings to be produced. That is a sunken colony right there from Oxerg. To go ahead and push these Zealots back. Thing is, is Oxerg has done a fantastic job, despite all of this. Of keeping his drone count very high. And establishing a lot of bases. Scourge wandering out looking for those Corsair. There is a DT alongside them. Going to be able to catch that Overlord. And should be able to basically wipe everything out. And I kind of like having it alongside these Zealots as well. 
I wonder if he's gonna. This is kind of one of those inverted situations where are the zealots? You, typically, you'll have like lurkers or hydralisks or something on the ground to kind of keep an eye on where the corsairs are at. This is almost an inverted situation where the DTs and the zealots. Usually, you'll have a DT on the ground trying to keep an eye on where the scourge are. But again, with these six corsairs, if they engage well on top of those scourge, they are going to be completely nullified. Hydralisk getting caught right on the ground, and this oh, with that overlord gone, this dark templar is gonna feast on this army. And these zealots getting right on top of this. Force Hydralis not even attacking for a good period of time. Drones in full flight trying to get back to the main. More overlords being produced. Good timing there. So it looks like, whoa, that was great play by Oxford to mitigate what could have been a disastrous situation right there. Seven Corsairs now out. The Scourge with the Hydralis are going to push them back. And Oxford now, we'll see how he plays this out. He's actually not in a bad situation. He's got four bases. He's pretty well shelled up. He is losing overlords here and there. He's supply capped. But if he can just flood out here in the map. Oh, is he going to catch some? Does manage to land some of those Scourge as the Corsair weren't in position for that engagement. It looks like I don't think any of the Corsair were taken out, though. Some of them are severely damaged. And Oxerg moving out with some Zerglings to go ahead and keep an eye out. And this is where these Corsair are going to be absolutely critical. To keep Oxerg in the red so he can't really capitalize on this huge economy that he is rolling. Hydralisks getting caught in open field against these Zealots. DeWalt now moving out to go ahead and try to take a Nexus. And Oxerg sweeping back around, going ahead and trying to engage at that mineral only. DeWalt opening up his front door, wants to clear out that gateway. Already producing Dragoons in anticipation of Lurkers. Ooh. A couple of those Corsairs getting caught in the midst of that distraction. Some Zerglings <laughs> waiting to do a bit of a backstab. You can just see a huge amount of Overlords. <laughs> Oxerg over overproducing Overlords a little bit at 140, 85, 143 right this second, but he can afford it. And I think that's almost a wise decision. He's like, okay, I'm mining off a bajillion bases. So let me just go ahead and fill out my supply and then immediately flood up to cap there. And you can see with everything he's producing is just, yeah, macroing in a massive amount of units. DeWalt might be in a bit of trouble. Zealot's moving across, although DeWalt does have a much, much larger base supply count. The question is, is how long is it going to last? Hydalus moving in across those Corsair. DeWalt moving up to the 9 o'clock. To go ahead and try to take that base. And I think it, yeah, if Oxerg just continues to pump units for the next minute and a half, he will have a sizable army to start engaging Dwalt heads up. He's got level one weapons though, comparatively. Level one weapons, level one armor. And level two weapons is on the way for Dwalt. Corsair's trying to hunt down what they can, not finding a lot though. They are scouting and seeing how many bases, just the sheer large, gigantic economy that Oxerg has rolling. Third base is up for DeWalt. That mineral only. Overlord is going to see this army incoming. Critically, though, Oxerg does not have any lurkers. This is a pure Hydralisk army. And also, that is a lot of Psystorm storm potentially from DeWalt. Sweeping across, Zealots peeling back a little bit, looking for engagement point. Oxerg actually swooping around. Good side storm over that back corner. Lurkers getting side storm before they can even burrow. They're getting wiped out after two shots, and that entire army completely wiped out almost instantaneously by DeWalt. Still has an observer overhead. This base is certainly going to get crushed. Army split. Few Hydralists trying to sneak in, do some damage, but DeWalt has too much. Macroed too well, and Oxerg, with everything he had, wasn't able to really fill in that army rapidly enough to deal with everything DeWalt is throwing out. More Hydralisks peeling underneath. Here's the thing with a pure Hydralisk army. You don't want the upgrades to be where they're at, and you want to have just an overwhelming amount of Hydralisks. Lurkers on the high ground. Misfire working a little bit, and I just don't see enough Lurkers to defend this. So Oxerg, where before, just two minutes ago, had several bases to work with, now is just getting rolled by DeWalt. 
just steamrolled. And the only thing slowing him down, honestly, is map features where he's having to go through funnels to engage. And this is just Psy Storm bait right here. Look at this. Oof, huge Psy Storms across these corners. Overlord's moving up to try to provide some sort of fodder. A couple Zealots going ahead and peeling in. Actually might be able to get that Evolution Chamber, which might be a significant thing to take down at this stage. But I think they're, we're going to see GG in a second, honestly. Because DeWalt maybe when the second army reinforces, because Oxford can't defend this base, and it just feels like it's a matter of time before he swings around and starts hitting much softer targets. Hydra's trying to swing underneath, but the Zealot's getting there just in time to just melt these Hydra's. Level 2 weapons is upgraded, but level 2 weapons finishing for DeWalt as well. And I don't think he's got enough. Well, we'll see. Here's the thing. This is a choke point. But you can just see the huge amount of reinforcements just streaming across the map for DeWalt. He has just stayed right on top of his macro this entire time. He's got that 9 o'clock rolling. You can see why he is perennially... Annually? <laughs> why he's constantly at the top of BSL. Continually pushing in. Oxer desperately trying to flood units across to provide, to muster some sort of defense. I think DeWalt... Now opting to regather his army. Probably going to go... We'll see if he goes for a repush here into the natural expansion. Still has a sizable attack force. Has plenty of size storm stored up. And he's taking the 6 o'clock uh, base. Might even want to go ahead and smack this 3. Oxerg is now at 4 functional bases. Has half the supply of DeWalt. And is mostly relying, it looks like, on Zerglings. And right now, it looked like he just threw out a round of drones to try to get his economy back up and rolling. DeWalt walking, just walking into the third, unopposed. Some drones making their way to a hatchery that's not going to be there by the time they reach it. More reinforcements coming across the low ground. DeWalt storming a little bit empty there. I think it would have been, yeah. And honestly, he's storming, assuming there's going to be more Hydralisk reinforcements. I'm not sure if he realizes just how far ahead he is. And honestly, even if he doesn't, he can basically just roll for kind of a, a containment here. Which is usually not what you see. Usually it's the Zerg doing containments there. Some Zerglings sneaking across those lines. Looks like a High Templar 2. Looks like a Dragoon getting picked off. Zerglings sweeping across, but there's already plenty of cannons and Psystorm to deal with this. Honestly, I'm wondering if DeWalt's going to hit max supply before Oxerg is able to hit 100. Huge bank. Rolling up with this army once again. Critically, it, I almost feel like the map is keeping Oxerg alive. Just because this is a this is a very tight funnel. This is a very tight funnel. There's just... You gotta go across small bridges in, to engage. Beautiful side storm ke catching... What, what was that? More than a control group. Another huge set of side storms. And I think this base is basically forfeit. This is way too many units flooding in, and I'm almost wondering if we're going to see a GG here momentarily from Oxer. Because this hatchery is certainly going to be disposed of. The Hydrosten's going to be there. Yeah, there's GG. DeWalt. Oof. His macro, so good. And those engagements and those storms. Oof. GG. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to move on to game two on a new map. Again, check out Team Think Quick. Sponsored half by esports fund and matching funds from Team Think Quick themselves. And also check out the New Worlds map pool. If you go to Team Liquid, you can vote on what your favorite maps are. I think that's still running. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.